Hi, Brent. Thank you very much for having you on my show. Pleasure. Pleasure to be here. Gratitude. Thank you very much. Brent, your life was not easy. You have gone through lots of ups and downs. And this happens to most of the successful people. And you're not, you're not one among them. Everybody goes through that. You are gone through the ditch. And today you are known as a highly paid motivational speaker. You are into network marketing. You are there into sales and so forth. But let me uh, take us through that ditch, what I call it, the ditch where you were shot, you were stabbed, and still you made it to where you are today. Because there are a lot of people, Brent, like you and I, who are struggling to get out of that ditch. What would you say to them? How, what, what, what is the message that you would like to share with those people who are still in the ditch and they don't see the light at the end of the tunnel? That's a great question. Thanks for bringing that up. So for those that's in the tunnel, those are that's in that ditch. When I was out here in Chicago, for most people known by the news, mm -hmm. it's it's not hard, it's not easy for a young black male coming up through the streets. Like yeah. success, paid motivational speaking, that's great. But being where I'm from, just being alive and being able to make it past the age 25 is a huge success. So when I was in the ditch, my ditch, and when I got shot, when I got stabbed. I just had my daughter. She just turned six months old. And the light, if it wasn't for my daughter, I don't know where the light would have came from. If I had to choose any light, it would have to been my background from being brought up in the Pentecostal church and Baptist church. You know, today, like Les Brown say, uh, most people, they teach what Jesus teach. I teach the message that Jesus teach. So my light I found was actually knowing that I had to do something better for myself so I can lead a better way for my daughter. And I know if I did not, then I possibly would not be here speaking with you or I'll possibly be behind bars due to the path that I chose at that time. So get out of that ditch. I had to hold on to my daughter. I had to gain a stronger vision of myself that let's talk about. And from that point, instantly opportunities started to come. Wow. Brent, you were known as the king of enlightenment, I believe. Correct. Well, how, who gave you that name and how did you get that name? And what is the secret behind it? The secret behind it is Eckhart Tolle. Uh, when I had got shot, uh, the first song I heard uh, rap music was Kendrick Lamar. Kendrick mm -hmm. Lamar had a song called Cut You Off. Yep. And he said, I read about Napoleon Hill and I try to know God. Mm -hmm. I said, okay, I know who God is, but who is Napoleon Hill? <laughs> so I looked up Napoleon Hill. And at this time, I am not a person that loves to read. I mm -hmm. hate it. I fall asleep in it. Mm -hmm. So reading Napoleon Hill led to one thing, led to another. And then I started to question religion as I started to find out about law of attraction. Mm -hmm. And I went to Barnes and Noble one day, stepped in the self-transformation section, mm -hmm. and voila, I came across Eckhart Tolle's book, pardon my language, came across his book, The Power of Now. Yeah. And it sat with me so well, it clicked so fast. I reached out, I tried to share the message, mm -hmm. and no one could grasp the message. Like To me, it was very simple. Mm -hmm. To others, it wouldn't. Yeah. So the way I began to break down, and at this time, I was working at a manufacturing company for Ford, Ford okay. Motors. Mm -hmm. So as I broke down and I explained to people, they became more aware. They had more deeper understanding. They had more passion about themselves. And mm -hmm. back to what you first said, then they start to become open to another light of themselves and the ditch that they were in. From that point, I said, I am that I am. I call forth those things that are not as, they, as though they were. And from mm -hmm. that point, I told myself I will be king in light. Wow. Wow. For, for those listeners who do not know about Napoleon Hill, Napoleon yes. Hill is an author who came up with a book which is considered to be one of the classic book even today. Would you like to speak something about that book, please? That book, uh, when I first read that book and I opened it up, automatically it grabbed my attention. Mm -hmm. Like I said, coming from Chicago and the environment I was in, my main set was money, money, money. I didn't value relationships. Mm -hmm. I didn't really value my own life. I didn't even see myself living to where I am now. I mm -hmm. didn't have that much of a dream. The only dream I had was sports mm -hmm. and sports, <laughs> period. So with that being said, when I read Napoleon Hill, he said, whatever the mind can conceive to believe, mm -hmm. it can achieve. Absolutely. Now to most people, that will be hocus pocus, mm -hmm. but it's not. And I learned that through reading the chapter, 
the Master Mind Alliance. Mm -hmm. When you start to understand the importance and value of relationships yeah. more than dollar bill, mm -hmm. your life will change tremendously. And from then, I can't stop. I'm, I'm, I'm a study of the book. I continue studying it. I recently picked up the book, uh, Think and Grow Rich by Dr. Dennis Kimbrough, yeah. The Black Choice. Yeah. And I'm loving that book. Wow, wow, wow. You, you are known to be an architect chair of change. Yes. What does that mean? An architect of change. In the beginning, everything starts first within the mind. Every, yeah. Everything that we do today, this camera that we're speaking through, yeah. the uh, podcasts that come out. Yeah. So the architect of change is mm -hmm. me. I, I do a series of call wordology, right? Okay. And with the architect, you got to look at it and break it down. When you hear the word arc, yeah. what's the first thing that comes to mind? It can be like arc your back, arch yeah. this, bend over, get yeah. over a hump. Yeah. And then when you come tech, mm -hmm. tech, you know, you think first tech savvy, technology and all mm -hmm. that. Yeah. Well, all them things have are in it, are inner mechanics. Mm -hmm. And with that inner mechanics, I take that and I talk to my clients that I have in my essential programs and I tell them, look, go in. The mechanic mm -hmm. is you. The mm -hmm. body is your machine. It's mm -hmm. just like the movie, The Matrix. Yeah. So when you start to tap in and go in mm -hmm. and you start to re-bend and shape your whole reality yeah. with the words that you choose, you mm -hmm. will feel and understand the power mm -hmm. that you have. So mm -hmm. that's where I come from, the architect of change. Many mm -hmm. people say just from my words, through my hip hop lyrics, through mm -hmm. my uh, motivation speaking, through the mm -hmm. books I'm writing, the mm -hmm. ideas I share, mm -hmm. it's just something about it. It changed them. I don't know. Don't ask me. <laughs> That's the way it's blessed. <laughs> well, I, 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 I caught two words. I caught two words. Okay, the first word is the hip hop. Come on, start one now. You got hip hop. 30, yeah, thirty seconds. Go ahead. See, I used to be that kid saying I want to be like him. The athlete in the field, the athlete in the gym, to a gangster in the streets, banging, slang, getting cheese. Just wanted to be a part of something. Got tired of being teased. See, my dad used to dress me, have me looking like school kids. Pants up, shirt in, I considered that cool kid. Every day we'd wake up, make sure that I went to church. Then match me and my brother like twins. We couldn't feel worse. See, my cousin was a pastor, older brother was a hustler. The story of my mama side, Baptists and gangsters. See, I grew up in the birds, but went to church in the hood. When that bell ring, I was out running the hood i know the feel to be blessed how to live through the struggle grew up living two lives this world i know how to hustle feel like i've been here before but don't remember the road is it the dreams that i had or my lost soul deja vu got me wondering but i ain't tripping the stressing because everything that i've seen ended out with a blessing all the pain i've been through all the love on the head they gave me things to talk about and led me straight to the pad wow wow <laughs> my audience are going to they're going to enjoy this I the hope second, so, man. I hope so. <laughs> the second word that I caught is the word client. Tell me who are your client and how do you build those client lists and how do you get to them? Do they come to you? Talk about that because there are a lot of, that's one of the challenges that most of the speakers or others, facilitators, they find to, to get hold of clients. And sometimes you get the clients and the next time you know that they have already gone. They don't stick on right. to you. So it's very hard. Number one, it's very hard to get the clients. And number two, it's very hard to keep or maintain that client. So what do you do? What is your, what's a magical trick, Brent? Magical, well, I wouldn't call it a trick because in the motivational industry, once I got actually in tune with less and started to travel mm -hmm. and be behind the scenes, I seen that it's not really, and pardon me for being honest, yeah, there's absolutely. not really a lot of motivational speakers living what they're preaching about. They're not mm -hmm. practitioners of that. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to the clients, yeah. I don't, I don't have that much of a struggle with getting their attention, but the challenge of maintaining them, the maintenance of holding them, that's a challenge. Yeah. But how I go about them is going through the events with less uh, throughout the Florida. Mm -hmm. I jump into some Facebook groups. Mm -hmm. And when you start to see, when people start to see you as the go-to person, the yeah. expert, the person that's actual genius and not about the dollar, yeah. that's when they start to reach out to you again. Like mm -hmm. they say in network marketing, yeah. the the money is in the follow up, you know yep. what I'm saying? So if you want to be rich, then you have to follow up. So most people, what they do is they look for the clientele, mm -hmm. they come up with a story to tell them, mm -hmm. but they can't close them. And mm -hmm. the reason they can't close the deal mm -hmm. because they're not closed on themselves on the actual value proposition. I know my value proposition. Mm -hmm. I offer a 30 minute, 
I offer 30 minute skill set calls so I can tap into them and see what their struggles is. And then Les has taught us these techniques on how to be a great listener and we just give it back to them. Mm -hmm. And then from there, we leave it to them to decide. And then you take the Grant Cardone. Oh. Call, call, call. Wow, wow. I love him. I love him. He has got, he has got a session happening in Miami uh, very mm -hmm. soon. Yeah. And I, I love the 10X what he comes up with. And he comes up yeah. with all new. He has got the new aircraft. And um, he, he, he's, he's, when it comes to sales, you've got to learn from him. He's the master. He's, he's the, the grandmaster. Grand Oh, wow. you, yes, that's the word, grandmaster. Yes, <laughs> exactly correct. And and you you were the founding member of Les Brown Unlimited. Uh, well, it was not called as a Les Brown Unlimited before. So how did it come up with? What made you join with Les Brown? There are a lot of other speakers around, especially in Florida. Why did you choose Les Brown? Oh man! All right, so back to that hole we talked about, that ditch. So I had moved from Chicago when I was 20 years old yeah. and I, I was just, I had just turned 24 and it was December. Mm -hmm. I was getting ready to go on layoff working at the manufacturing company mm -hmm. and I've been following Les Brown's page mm -hmm. and an advertisement came up talking about the Institute. Yeah. I'm like, man, I feel like this is a sign. I had just created a website on Wix. I had just dropped my EP, my extended project, five songs. Mm -hmm. It's like, man, everything's in alignment. How much it costs? So I call him. Hey, like Brent, the program, the investment, this is the first time thing. Let's do it. We want to give back. It costs $5,000. Yeah. I'm like, $5,000? Like, I'm only <laughs> making about $3,000 a month, and I'm laying off. Yeah. And at that time, I had only $750 in my name. Uh, the people really was, like, very uh, understanding. They was willing. So I came up $500. I made the investment. They yeah. told us they was looking for 10 speakers to speak on stage with less. I told my story. I was one of the top 10 selected. Wow. Then I had to struggle to find out how was I going to get to Florida. I just spent $500. I had to eat. Now I'm down. Mm -hmm. I called 77 people. Wow. Only seven gave me money to finance that trip to get out there. And when I got out there, I had to sell myself. And I sold myself so well that they called me up, gave me an opportunity, flew me out, and I traveled all throughout the Florida doing speech with less. And the reason I chose less because there's no motivational speaker out there in the world that I can consider a grandmaster and that actually been through so much hardship, all the excuses. Yeah. I, don't, I never knew my father. He never knew neither one of his parents. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, I never been to college. Neither did Les and was labeled educationally, mentally retarded. Yep. So I'm looking, no offense to Les, that's my guy. I love him. I call mm -hmm. him like my holy father. But I'm saying if this guy that was labeled mentally challenged, and adopted, has a twin brother, then what's stopping me? Mm -hmm. So when Les had said that, this was my turning point with Les. When he said that teacher came from around that desk and he said, don't let someone opinion you yeah. become your reality. Exactly. Ever since right. that, he had me. He had me. Wow. That's why I chose Les. Yeah. So you, you took the risk to go there. You invested in yourself because there are a lot of people when they – hear that the fee is going to be $5,000 or maybe $10,000, they sit back and they say that I can't invest it. I have invested a lot of money just like what you have done. So investment becomes a major role if you want to excel and grow in your life. Definitely. What would Definitely. that one thing you would like to share with the audience? One classic thing that you would like to advise or share with my audience? I tell people all the time, uh, if I was to die right now, on my tombstone, I will want it to say, he lived as God and died a message. Mm -hmm. What do mm -hmm. I mean by that? Live as God. Many people, Allah, universe, whatever you want to call it, that energy, that force is nothing but trust and acceptance and embracing everything around you. That's how you're able to walk with unshakable fear because you know that you're a part of everything. And this physical body only limits you to so much. But you have to really be a practitioner of everything that you teach. And yeah. that's what I mean by a message. Let mm -hmm. your way of life be a message either to your kid, either to your parents, either to those that's watching you coming before you, to your coworkers. I don't know who it's going to be. Mm -hmm. But let your path and your walking example and words be a message and embrace everything that comes with it. 
Wow, wow. So you you must be an example and you have to set yourself as an example and everything starts from your home, then you take it to your office, you take it to the street, wherever you go. You have yes. to be original. You have to be original. You have to be authentic. If you are standing on the stage and if you're preaching something, once you get down on the stage, you have to be the, exactly the same person. Nothing changes. Yeah. Because we yes. all, you and I and entire every people who are listening to this, we all are the creation of the creator and there's only one creator and we all belong to him irrespective of what our color is irrespective of what our blood is everything is red the blood that flows on in through your stream and that goes through mine is red so there is nothing wrong we are brothers facts that's what i'm saying that's why i want people to know you can you can't run from it you shall know the truth exactly correct ladies and gentlemen brand Thank you.